Hey, this is Hayes Ragsdale of The Prescriptions, and you're listening to Sound Words STL Podcast. How you guys doing? This is Andy Rizika for Sound Words STL Podcast on soundwordsstl.com. So initially, the prescriptions were set to only play two shows this year with former Civil Wars member John Paul White. But after seeing the band in person at South by Southwest, he was so impressed that he added them to the entire West Coast tour. So the Nashville-based group Indie Rocker's debut album, Hollywood Gold, is available now. Joining me, of course, here at Del Mar Hall, where they're playing, uh, is the front man, Hayes Ragsdale. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much. For, as your second trip to St. Louis, and, and I'm, we're glad you came back. Uh, so congrats on being added to the tour. What kind of opportunity is this tour for, for you guys as a band? God, it's a it's an opportunity that just kind of came out of. It felt like it came out of the blue, um, and just we we were, you know, kind of trying to book summer dates, and all of a sudden that problem was solved for us like really quick, uh, you know, because there's this pre-made tour that we just get to jump on, so it's been really good. Um, seeing places that we've never been, and uh, you know, playing shows and in, in venues that we probably wouldn't get to play otherwise it's been just really really great have you guys done a lot of tours before is this kind of one of your first tours um this is the longest okay longest tour we've been on uh we've we've you know we've toured around like small spurts of shows here and there um but yeah i think this is about three weeks three weeks long so that's the longest by probably about two weeks that's pretty cool. And yeah. this also does a double duty thing because you just released that album in April, mm-hmm. ha- uh, Hollywood Gold. And so this, this tour is also, w- would you say you're also using this as a, a means to kind of launch that for you guys as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it, it, we, we have vinyl, we have press vinyl uh, that we've been, you know, kind of bringing around with us trying to, <laughs> trying to hey, hey, did you enjoy the show? You want a vinyl? Um, yeah, but that's pretty cool. And this new album, I was listening to it. It has so many blends. It seems like there's there's so many influences in there. Mm-hmm. I feel like I heard maybe like a, of course a Neil Young with with the harmonica. I feel like I kind of heard maybe Bob Dylan, maybe even maybe even down to a U2 kind of feel on mm-hmm. the I'm Out track. How do you fit all those styles together? And, and is that kind of your your vibe going forward? You guys are going to continue to try to play a wide variety of stuff yeah i think when i think you nailed it i think uh when that's your vocabulary like growing up that's what you listen to uh it's just and and we all kind of have the same vocabulary when it comes to those influences you just mentioned and a lot more uh you know like wilco and and uh classic country artists and stuff like that and um it just sort of blends you know it just and and the you know you form it around the song uh you so the sounds sort of just happen naturally i guess um but uh yeah we we kind of all worked as a team on this record and uh we we played a lot of the songs live for a long time and then we were able to go into the studio and sort of hash them out very quickly um which is different than the stuff that we're you know working on moving forward we're kind of in the studio concocting stuff but yeah so was there any rhyme or reason you just perform these the main stuff you perform on the road so that was kind of why you selected them for this or is there kind of a conversation on the lp that it was just like the things that felt the most right when we were playing them out live and and uh you know it just it just kind of there was never really many uh, conversations honestly it was just a lot of like yeah we should probably record that song and then that was uh, yeah and then that's really how the whole album happened we did a couple of songs um, there's a song called cuts like a knife and then like days go by on the album that we uh, we put together in the studio like no one had heard the song and we just kind of made it happen all in the studio on the day of so that's got to be exciting yeah that, that those were fun um, <laughs> <laughs> Those were definitely fun, uh, but yeah. Do you do that in front of the audience? Hey, we just got this new song. Maybe you haven't heard it yet, and then play it for them and, and engage the reaction. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's hard to do that sometimes because I, f- 
feel like it's it's dependent on so many factors, you know, w- how an audience takes it as on. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think definitely, like, over time, you kind of know which songs you're like, that one we should definitely oh, cool. record. Yeah. And you recorded this album at the Sound Emporium Studios in Nashville. And many big artists have recorded there, R.E.M., Robert Plant. Uh, what was it I like? I didn't know R.E.M. recorded there. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you, did you feel kind of the sense of, of, of history there, or what was it like recording there? It was uh, not to be hyperbolic, but just kind of awe-inspiring, honestly, because I had never been into a studio, like, you know, really in a serious way, like, mm. uh, before. So uh, there's a studio, there's a room, it's, I think it's A, that's just, I think a lot of those things that you just mentioned were recorded in. and. Um, yeah, it was just, it, I felt a little out of my depth, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> um, so here's a question I have as, as you just put out your, your latest album. Um, it's kind of an out, out there question, but with iTunes going out the window, are putting out albums more important now than maybe trying to channel a single or something to, to draw attention? Um, man, that's a good question. Uh, it's the it's the way I still consume music, so it's it's kind of like back to the vocabulary thing. It's like the way I understand how to make music, probably as well, because it's the way that I consume it. Um, so I don't know the the grand scheme of things. Like I don't know, you know, the behind the scenes sort of right answer to this question. But as a person who's you know trying to make music, it's the way that it makes sense to me mm-hmm. um so yeah that's awesome yeah um but yeah that's pretty pretty amazing and the it, album format is the thing that makes sense to me yeah yeah um so you guys record in nashville and you're you're from birmingham and the band is a collection of people from all over the you know country is that is that kind of how the how the band came together um so me and the bass player named his name is Parker McAnally. Uh, we we've been friends for a long time, and we played music in high school together. And then he went, he went to college. We went to separate colleges, and then we kind of met back up in Nashville. And he he went to school for music, so he had a bunch of connections, and that's sort of how he knew John, the drummer. Uh, and then John knew Chris, who plays guitar, and. It just kind of formed that way. Parker introduced me to John because I wanted to just, you know, jam on some songs with a drummer. And uh, I, I, we were talking about this the other day. I don't think there was ever a conversation that was like, hey, we're a band now. It was just <laughs> it just kind of like over time, you just kind of things seem to be going OK. And then you just you just kind of keep want to keep wanting to do it. And you somehow know? you all had the same musical style or did it, it was a prod to some of you. Well, Parker has a, you know. A, not to use the same word again, but a large musical vocabulary, and uh, you know he he's kind of shown me a lot of things over the years, like introduced me to Wilco and you know stuff like that, and uh, so I think with that and then his you know him knowing John and knows that John likes the same kind of music, it just kind of I think we all Chris the guitar player is into some uh, he's into the same music but he's also into some metal stuff and some sort of he was trying to show us some uh, I don't know what it was like doom metal the other day that we were kind of having a tough time with but yeah. <laughs> do you think you'll ever throw out just some one metal <laughs> we've talked about doing like more of a hardcore like punk little EP thing okay. but yeah we'll see about that okay okay <laughs> How did, and then did did you is there any th- a reason for the prescriptions as a name? Or did, what's what's behind that? Or is there a story at all? Um, there's not like it, it was a I was in band name thinking mode, and I I think I just you know that name just kind of popped into my head or I saw a sign I think maybe for the it just said prescriptions on it, so not to give away the mystique of the band <laughs> name, but. It's it's just a band name, you know. Okay. Uh, there's not there's not a grand plan for the band name, if that makes sense. Right. Well, we're definitely coming up to your. Uh, we're here at the Delmar Hall. You're going to play tonight. Sound check is coming up. Mm-hmm. So, a- anything else you want to want to add? Um, how to find your album? Maybe where we can get it? Um, it's 
right now it's just available digitally uh but we do have vinyl with us when we're when we're touring hopefully we'll get some distribution for it so it'll get out in the record store soon um uh but yeah and we'll have cds available shortly too um we've kind of discovered on this tour that people still buy cds yeah which i don't uh we weren't expecting that you know <laughs> hey where's the cd for your debut record well we don't have one <laughs> so that's been a kind constant of constant conversation to, come on said to come out and run it rush out and get a bunch of dvd cds burned i know i know we, we probably should i think we'll do some form of that here shortly <laughs> Well, thanks so much for, for being here and thanks for having taking me. time. Uh, once again, the Prescription's debut album, Hollywood Gold, is out now. Uh, it's all over the streaming platforms as well as where we just mentioned. And if you want even more from the band, you can follow along with them on social media. Uh, thanks so much. I'm Andy Rizika. This is SoundWords STL Podcast on SoundWordsSTL.com. Thanks for listening to the SoundWords STL podcast.